real and possible approval of the second phase of 2011 rate increase as possible. As the board's aware, in uh, uh, 2011, we did a cost of service study and we chose to implement only a portion of that rate increase. Um, the, the thought being we wanted to keep those rates as low as possible. Also in the past rate increase, we have not, um, that has not impacted our small commercial or large commercial customers, but the impact has always been to our residentials. And that was identified in the cost of service study that the commercials were slightly subsidizing the residential rates. We've now brought that into balance with the last rate increase. And this one that we're proposing will impact then both, both parties uh, equally. Um, obviously, the question has been asked about uh, delaying action on this. It's in the, always been the policy of the board to have this uh, heard in at least two board meetings before taking action. We invite any questions from the public to be submitted to myself or uh, Terry or Mendes, and uh, we, uh, we will bring any information or questions that are, that are submitted to the board for consideration in our September meeting. We would, I mean, our, our thoughts are to educate you as to why we need a rate increase, where we are financially, and then allow you and the public a month to consider those numbers and then uh, bring action in the uh, September meeting. So with that, we'll give you an overview of uh, what we're proposing and what the uh, cost of service study reflected. And Terry, did you want to? Sure, OK. Um, Terry that, put this together. Put so. on page, yeah. Um, like Delmar said, you know, the cost of service study we did was in October of 2011. The total showed that we needed at that time a 6.1% or a $2 million cost of, or increase. And these numbers are to bring us in compliance with our debt service coverage. And that debt service coverage is one thing that really drives what our rates should be. We have covenants we've made with the bond company and the CFC bank that we would maintain a certain level of coverage so that they feel secure in their um, uh, risk they've taken with the district. So the, the, the program we're looking at is to bring us to that minimum coverage that's required by our loan documents. Um, last year, the study showed that our base charges in all rate classes were, um, should be increased. So at that time, we increased our base charge by $5. And this increase generated approximately 820,000 of the two thousand or the two million suggested by the cost of service study. Our thought, our thoughts there, as as we made that decision, was to stretch that increase out as far as possible, recognizing the weak economy we're all in, and uh, keep that rate as low as possible for as long as possible. Now the second part of the study um, is based off of the kilowatt hour charge and the demand charges. And we redid the numbers as of April the April of this year. And the re revenue still showed that we needed an increase of about $1.2 million and directly showed that the residential customers and the large service demand customers were, is where we needed that well, rating. And they, the, yeah, and they were on parity. Large commercial and residential are at parity now as to cost of providing them electrical service. And, and that was pretty much in balance with uh, what we found from the previous study, so right. it, it lined up, it made sense. Um, we want to let everybody know that this rate increase only affects residential and the large customers. The small businesses and the irrigation customers are not affected at all. On our residential rates, the current residential rate is broken out into three different blocks. The first block is the first 500 kilowatt hours, and the current rate right now is 0 0.0748. The second block is the next 1500 kilowatt hours, and that's at the 0 
and anything over that or over the 2,000 kilowatt hours is at 10 cents. The proposed new rate would increase blocks one and two by four and a half percent, would not increase blocks three, and that total increase would be approximately $511,000. Would generate about $500,000. Does the average home get to block three? No. In the, in the summer, some of the homes do, yeah. Some Especially some of the older homes. Average does not. Um, the average is block the one side. or block two? Or block two. They, the average is probably around 1,600 mm -hmm. kilowatt okay. hours. Which gets them into that second block. Right. And on the commercial side, um, the large demand rate, it would increase the kilowatt hours and the demand charge by again 4.5% for a total increase of approximately $620,000. It would increase their kilowatt hour rate from 0 0.0655 to 0 0.06845, and it would increase the demand charge to $9.01. I was just going to ask, just remind us what, how, what it takes to be classified large. They have to be over 500 kW and, and use, uh, I, don't, I don't remember the breakdown on the KWH. Thirty or fifty thousand, one of those fifty thousand kilowatt hours. Mm -hmm. so, right. Play. I mean, to put that in perspective, your McDonald's gas stations, those places do not meet the uh, meet the large uh, commercial level. Um, pro, uh, the uh, Alaska Bathwares in Moapa is probably where that size break takes place. They're at the five hundred kW and uh, above. So. And what, what we intend to do is we'll review all of these small commercial rates to make sure that everyone's on a small commercial that belongs on a small commercial and everybody's on a large one that belongs on a large one. So. The revenue comparison for our resi residential rate is the current rate right now for a 1,200 kilowatt hour customer, the total amount on a monthly basis is approximately $122 a month. And with the new rate increase, 4.5%, it changes that to 126 or $4.32 a month increase. With the average cost per kilowatt hour of those 1,200 kilowatt hours at $0.08. Cents. Eight cents. And down on the bottom here, I just put down here, based on a 2,000 kilowatt hour, it increases at about $5.70 on a monthly basis. That's a limited number of customers. Now the large um, general service demand, the current rate base, and this is based off of this so weird little calculation here, it's 100 kW at 60% load factor with 43,200 43, kilowatt hour usage. And our current rate right now would be $3,381 and it would go up to $3,532. Now we went and we did some com comparisons in the area with other utilities and on the residential side, these are the comparisons. Nevada Energy is 147.96 and this is all based on full 100 kilowatt hours. And this comes off their web page or a direct request from the utility. Right. There's Valley's 146, we're at 126 and that's based off of the increase, the 4.5% increase. The city of St. George is 101, and Lincoln County Urban Urban is. I, that's 100. the only thing that's puzzled me. I'm still trying to identify an urban. Urban is their the stuff they have in Clark County. Oh, okay. They have if if we if we put their rate up for what they pay in Lincoln County, it's more on the order of what city of St. George or just below that. Bear in mind they're all 100% hydro. Uh, they've never had to go out. They've never had. No. They've never exceeded their hydro. When we were 100 percent hydro, life was great. But every day we added a customer and had to go out on the open market and buy power and borrow money to build infrastructure. All of that growth has driven our costs over the last 20 years, and Lincoln has not experienced that. City of Mesquite has some contracts with the uh, Deseret and the coal-fired plants in Central Utah. It's helped to keep their rates. City of St. George. St. George. City of St. George has been able to maintain a, a, a lower rate because of that relationship. 
So with that, uh, this, this is where we're at right now. This, this is, is the proposed rate. This, this is, is if we went to the rate proposed rate. rate. Yes. Uh -huh. Let's go back another two slides. Just so we would be looking at 126 instead of the 142. 122. Or one, and instead of the 122, we'd go to the 126. So you roll up again. Four dollars and thirty six. Four dollars. Yeah. Right now, go for two more slides. That so we would be 126, and then so we would be. Uh, is, there it is. It used to be 122. And you're going to ask the question, why did we choose 120 or 1,200 kilowatt hours? Because that's the average usage of our residential customers on a yearly basis. Now you look at July, you're it's going to be, be, more, be yeah. quite a bit higher than that because of air conditioning loads. You look at it in April, it's going to be a lot less than that because it's pleasant weather. So that's the average and that's why we chose that number uh, for a, a rate comparison. And that doesn't include the, anything that the city tax on? No, that well, does not include city. anything that the city... You know, we, we could show two different rates here. Um, two different rates here. But that's, that's not but that's not our rate. No, no that's not that's, our... We don't, we don't give any of that. That's a pass our tax. obligation is strictly to collect that for the city. If the city wants to cancel that tax... That's their, that's that's their, their business. Office. The law only requires us to collect it. We're, we don't impose it or have an it's option. It's not ours. Yeah. It's so we don't get to spend it or. It's really not. A, it's really not a power bill. No. It's a tax the city places on people yeah. for using power. Yeah. So. And this is the comparison for the large um, general service demand. It's on the same specifications. NV Energy is thirty three thousand six hundred. Valley Electric is forty one hundred. We're at 35, City of St. George is 27, and Lincoln County is 38. And that's the... So even with the increase, we're going to be 20 dollars a month earlier with people around us in most places. Yes. Yes. And with that, if you have questions regarding it, uh, are you are you looking are we looking for a, a motion to postpone and I certainly would like that. Yeah. Yeah, that's, that's the intent that we would postpone until September. Yeah, I'm looking and hear this item again in September. Yeah, we're down to two million reserve. Yeah, one thing will happen though in in December we're down to just under th three million. In December we don't have to pay that power bill because we paid early. That'll bring two million into the coffer, but a million of it's gonna go out because of uh, CFC. Our CFC payment. So, so one one mess up, and we've lost all our reserve. Sure. It, but we are in the large revenue months of uh, of uh, July and August and September. So, we 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 expect to see uh, uh, some increase. We always in dip down and then we come slowly creep back up. Well, it's go up fast. Uh, that's what we're. <laughs> okay. So I'm looking for I'm looking for a motion uh, to postpone. The uh, second phase of the 211 rate increase, the consideration of the second phase of the 211 rate increase until the September uh, board meeting. I'll make that motion. Okay, I have a motion to postpone. I've got a second for a motion to postpone. Is there any discussion? The only discussion I'd have is just, it's self evident, but just for everybody who's listening in or whatever, um, staff makes themselves available to answer all those kind of questions. and meet with groups or whatever has to take place in order to be able to answer those questions. And we've done it in the past, it's always helped, so I just wanted to make everybody aware that that's available. And uh, all of this material. Yeah, all the material that anyone wants to review is going to be available during that month. So, uh, I have another on the website or something. Is there any further discussion? Uh, hearing none, uh, I'll call for the question. Uh, all those in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed? Hearing none, the motion carries for postponement. Uh, and we will move on to the next item.